This is the 8-9 Combo. I am Brett McKay and I'm joined by my downtrodden co-host, still annoyed that La Rochelle chose Cape Town to be where their European defence begins in earnest. Harry Jones. Hello, mate. How are you doing? How's it, Brett? I was of a, a sad puppy for a while, but here's my reflection. In the shadow of the posts, of their own posts, 38 million declared Euros, another 10 million undeclared Euros of rugby talent stood. Uh, the 8-9 combo of Cor Barlow and Aldrit, Skelton and Latou, the bad boy Aussies, Botia, the world's greatest breakdown artist, Jack Noel, the, the Angle, the Stormer Darling Dylan Lades, um, there was uh, Ahaya West and Sklavi the RG, Antonio, Dante, Duel, and Roman Fekinogara was praying that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, that the king would be, that the kick would be missed. And poor Mani Labok. 100% on no look cross kicks and offloads, but a 62% kicker for the season. And that 62% is real. And uh, even with five Stormers knocked out of the game and everyone playing in the wrong jersey, there was no submission by my little tiny Stormers against this big mm -hmm. giant team. A couple of million bucks in plasticine, all we had, tried to death, but the prayers of big money often get to heaven first. And thus <laughs> did he miss the kick. And so sets the sail and calms the storm. The dream has ended and the test side masquerading as clubs go on. And now the storm has missed their European payday. Ouch. Oh, it was episode... beautiful. It was a very good match, though, I will say. Yeah, I have no doubt about that. I have no doubt about that. It's episode nine of the 8-9 Combo Rugby Podcast, all thanks to the Sports Social Podcast Network. And you will still find us, you can find us on all the pod platforms, Amazon Music and Audible, um, Spotify and Apple, YouTube, and it's musical variations uh, and of course the end of days on google podcasts as well literally wherever you get your podcasts so please do like follow subscribe and rate us and review uh, and share as well and yes you did hear us at the helm of the raw rugby podcast for a couple of years and if you listen to us back then we obviously say welcome back but if you are completely new to the pod to the eight nine we say hello and we hope you stick around for this new little journey of ours into the rugby pod world. Uh, cheers and jeers, mate. It's the new name for the way we've started the pod for a while. And what are you celebrating with a cheers to start us this week? We're probably going to talk about a couple of ugly things in rugby, but let's talk about something yeah. beautiful. With a game in the balance at minute 59 and his team behind, Will Skelton used his bulk to protect Salman Murat, the storm, stormer captain who was knocked out, literally cradled him got yeah. like kind of formed a bridge right in the middle of play this is rugby in action will skelton is six foot eight and 150 kilograms and 50 kilograms of that is heart good man <laughs> yeah this was it was such a good thing to see and we'll post that on, on the socials um, as well uh, afterwards so you can you can check it out but it's just one of the nicest things i've seen uh, genuinely nice things I've seen on, on a rugby field. Um, I have a jeez for you, mate. I have a couple, actually. And unfortunately, it's the Fijian Drua for a second straight week. I mean, one was for the two shocking pieces of just outright thuggery for which Frank Lamani and, and Johnny Kondudu will pay for with lengthy suspensions that may well have been handed down by the time you're listening to this. There's no place for either act in our game. Let's be very clear about that. But secondly... It was for the really sad case of racial abuse that Lamani then copped from a Melbourne Rebels supporter as he came from the field. I mean, it's it's twenty twenty four people. We just we just need to be be better, Harry. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Um, I'm, I'm laughing only because that that adage of "be better" it kind of sticks in yes, my craw as kind, kind of, of woke dissitude. But let, let's like just it. say it really up front to me. That guy shouldn't be allowed in the stands again. No. He shouldn't be in that crowd. He's lost the ability to control himself. Yep. If you're in 2024 and you still think it's cool to call out someone's you know immutable characteristic of where they're from or their origin, I mean, just get out what of here. Exactly right. Yeah. No, no place for it. Uh, do you have an eight nine of the week? Oh, there's some good ones. You know, your man, yeah. Charlie Kale, the good-looking fella at the number eight for the Brumbies, and Harrison Goddard were pretty good. Yeah. But I'm going to go to Bordeaux, who spat the Saracens out of the yeah. Champions Cup with uh, Tevita Tatafu, uh, the Japanese, Tongan-born uh, Japanese number eight, big, powerful lad, uh, teaming up with Max Lusu, the tricky Frenchman from Bordeaux. 
Yeah, right. I'm glad you mentioned Charlie Cale and Harrison Goddard because they had, uh, unfortunately, a massive 8-9 failure on the weekend as well. <laughs> Harrison Goddard gets around the corner, Charlie Cale sees what's going on, and he does everything right except pick the ball up from the back of the scrub. <laughs> he's just got a bit ahead of himself. But he's got, anyway, the, he's got the jersey tucked in. He looks stuff. like he's, yep. he's he looks like he knows what he's doing, the strong Cale. Following on from the great Pete Samu, that's what he's doing there, tucking the jersey in. Uh, but we're looking forward to this week's guest, mate, another one who we included right toward – the very top of the list of previous guests that we knew we had to get on the 8 night. He is coming up next. And he is coming up as soon as I take Music. him off mute. It is with our great pleasure that we present another 8 9 combo debut to someone we've spoken to before who's always willing to share his great insights and knowledge with rugby fans through the platforms like this or via the socials. One of the great rugby brains that I'm very pleased to to see will be back on board with the Wallabies this year. It is the one and only Lord Laurie Fisher. Laurie, we got, gentlemen, how are we? we got him. A, We're very well. Mate. Be here. Let's try to not get you in trouble this time. <laughs> well, we did get you in trouble yeah, last time, didn't we? Well, you know, I think it was good I've, trouble. I've, I've, I've survived it, so it's all right. At least, Laurie, if you if you bag the Wallabies' defence coach this year, you could be bagging yourself. Well, that's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, look, if you get bagged for it, being honest, then so be it, mate. Yeah, very true. Uh, great to have you back on the pod, uh, mate. And Harry, I'm I'm really excited about Laurie Fisher in the place of uh, rugby in 2024 because I get to call Laurie Fisher a colleague of mine, which is actually a weekly joy for me on uh, on on the ABC Radio in, in Canberra doing Brumbies games. We've got him up on upstairs this year, and he's doing a bang up job of it. Let me say. I would expect that. I mean, isn't it all about calling it like you see it? Laurie's always yeah. been a guy who calls it like he sees it. <laughs> I know. Look, I've just tucked into the conservative nature of the ABC and uh, just enjoying the footy from different views. <laughs> Do they give you free uh, meat meat pies, Laurie? No. no, nothing. I had to bring my own sushi on uh, on Saturday night, Harry. It did. He did. Sushi yeah. in the pocket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, he, but again, he, he's fitting in perfectly, Harry, because as soon as the rain comes down and I'm scrambling for an umbrella down on ground level, all I hear upstairs is just the very quiet noise of a window closing. <laughs> but in the 10 years I've been doing the job, Laurie had a first for me on Saturday night. He actually showed genuine concern for me in the weather <laughs> before the game. No other commentator has done that. So I've got I've got nothing but respect for, for Laurie Fisher this this. Uh, this season, He's more than all It's <laughs> all I ask for, mate. It's all I ask for. Mate, we're, we're really keen just to have a, a good old-fashioned, a great rugby chat, like we say, but we're really keen to get your thoughts and what you're seeing both as a retired coach and as someone coming back into the international game at the, at the moment. What are you seeing in terms of the way the game is played now that maybe was different 12 months ago? What did the World Cup do for the way the club games are being played now? Because it sort of feels like the game does look a little bit different in 2024. Yeah, look, look, I, and I, look I've been spending just about all my time on Super Rugby and, and watched the um, Six Nations, of course, but I haven't watched a lot of European rugby, just highlights. But certainly, I think, certainly amongst Australian sides, there's a greater willingness to use the ball, I think, rather than mm -hmm. tucking up your jumper and just earn hard yards and... and I think um, I, I do see uh, balls heading down 15 metre channels a little bit more often, uh, trying to find space in behind and, and those sorts of things. So I, I, I do think there's a, a bit more adventure in the Aussie games. There's always been adventure in Super Rugby. That's the nature of it. But I think I think uh, we've probably gone away from being uh, ultra organised to, to mm. really just try to um, you know, work hard, spot opportunities, get the ball and and, uh, and see how you end up. It's been interesting to watch, Harry, because within that, and I, and I agree with that completely, but within that, all of a sudden, Queensland's playing more of a set-piece game. Like they, they're really using their line out as a, as a platform going forward. You know, the Brumbies have always had that set-piece element, but they're trying to add a bit of concerted counter-attack to their game or, 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 or perfect the counter-attack that they've been playing with. So it's mm. it's interesting to see games sort of evolving. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. When you look at the Brumbies, for example, Tom Wright's into his second year at 15. He's yeah. a wonderful, wonderful footballer, so everything takes time. And 
the th thing with with Tom is he's, he does have a real adventure to his game. He'll 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 spot not a, a small opportunity and take it. And he needs to be supported by by uh, his players in in doing that, so that if it if, if it shuts down, they can support breakdown or there's an offload opportunity. And I think that's where Brumbies have improved this year that that he mm -hmm. that he can he, he can take an opportunity if it doesn't come off. He's got, he's he's still got options for continuity, and if it does come up, boy, it looks fantastic. <clears throat> it certainly does. Yeah. Sorry. So so Laurie, and obviously our game is unique in the sense that we have to clean uh, rocks and breakdowns. Um, a lot of other sports don't have that. It's it's all stoppage. So you know, even if you go wide, you got to somehow get someone there because you never know which yeah. rock they're going to come over the ball. So on yeah. attack, you're always having to commit one more player than the defense probably usually. Which one is harder work, cleaning 10 phases or defending 10 phases in your experience? Yeah, look, it, it, it's interesting, isn't it? That um, Look, it all depends where on the field you are, I think. If you're playing 10 phases attack around the halfway, it's hard work. If you're playing 10 phases in the opposition 22 and you can sift the try line, then I think it's not as hard work. It's the same yeah. 10 phases. A lot, dep a lot depends on, yeah. on are you going forward or are you not going forward. I, th I think if you're static across the field, then it's a lot easier to defend. You've only got to get up in your spot. Uh, and and go again, and, and whereas the defence, the attacks really got to hard work hard. And I thought there was a, a great example on the weekend um, on Charlie Kale's try, where the, where the where the Brumbies worked around the corner third phase. It's something the Reds have done. Reds scored a fantastic yeah. try when Harry Wilson came from about twenty metres in field to make the extra man around the corner. I think Tommy Hooper did the same on the weekend. So they get yeah. they, they they make numbers through through work ethic down a short side down a. The long side, which is the short side, then they build great shape to come back. A little bit like yeah. uh, I think Leinster was it was at the big uh, McCarthy or whatever it is when, when he, he, he takes a second phase carry around the line out off 10 behind the back of a centre on a short line. Those sort yeah. of things where if you're prepared to work hard, there's space on the field. If you're just traditional, play off nine, put your head into the defence, then that's really hard work. Yeah, where does it go next? You know, you look at the ruck, there's a lot more rucks than, say, 2009, 2011. Then it jumps a lot in 2018. And from then, it's just been, you know, a lot of rucks per game. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll usually hold on to 97. I think the Brumbies are 97% ruck uh, success, but same as, yeah. same as Reds. Um, but, I mean, like, uh, the three-second, two, the two-second ruck is crazy now. And then you have the defense trying to do a five-second tackle, almost like hold them up, hold them up, you know, yeah. two and guys... They yeah and, and they're having to do that because we're seeing more and more teams having to make 200 tackles a game exactly yeah so where does and it go I, from here are we are we going to have more and more you know, 250 tackle games well i know I, I think it's probably about where where it's going to go at the moment but but to your point harry i think that's exactly where the game is at the moment is it, it it's about the attacking side trying to uh, get as much quick ball as they can and uh and happy to recycle through that and and the, and the defending side Trying to slow slow ball down as much as they can, and and, and you know that's that's been where the game's trending the last few years. And I th I think, it, it, I mean, if I look at a couple of the Aussie sides, I think that's where sides like like the Waratahs and the Force fall down at the moment. Yeah, uh, and and even the Rebels a little bit in their defensive side is, is that um, it, it's it. It's it's either they lose numbers, they lose numbers in the tackle, and they're not effective in their. You know, well, there's too much double high tackle. They might they might buy they might buy two seconds of slowing the breakdown, but they lose numbers in, which creates space. Mm -hmm. uh, efficiency is still the name of the game, and, and I think <laughs> the sides that are efficient around, around the, the carry game and around the tackle contest game are the sides that will come out on top. Yeah, you know, it's fascinating in the in the Chasing the Sun two uh, documentary, which obviously I recommend to everyone who can get their hands on it. Um, there's a moment where they're preparing for the French quarterfinal, and Rossi and Felix, you know, identify the space on the field and say, "This is our purple play." You know, they, they won't use that t color again, so I'm not giving anything away. Purple play, and it's a little kick, uh, and what it does is it exposes the entire French line, and it's just deep analysis, and you can open up a team. <coughs> You know, when you're looking forward to working with the Wallabies, are you looking forward to that level of, you know, unlocking end of end of year tour or the Welsh coming, like trying to find that space that's so precious? 
absolutely. And then, look, and that happens at Super Rugby at, at Super Rugby as well. But there's probably more space at the Super Rugby level, and that, that's the difference. Is is yeah, is, exactly. There's yeah. less opportunity at the international level, and particularly when you get into the top four or five in the world. So that so there is more space, and, and there's, there's there's probably at this point in time there's a fair bit of space on edges in Super Rugby. So so definitely when the stakes are higher and the opportunities are fewer. The, the need to uh, be so precise in, in analysing where those opportunities are likely to be and how you can access those opportunities. I think that's the cutting edge, isn't it? Yeah, and I feel like Australian teams for a while now have struggled on the height, not the Brumbies necessarily, but the other teams have struggled on the height of the entry into the ruck. That's been the cause of cards, it's been the cause of penalties, it's been the cause of lost ball. Um, what? How do you how do you coach that to these young men? How do you mm. how do you get that level of discipline when you're tired and uh, and obviously you're trying to affect a clean, but you still yeah. got to stay so low now. Well, I mean, I, mean I, I I sort of have a system around what I coach, uh, uh, what the outside support does, what the inside support does. If if you tip the ball to an outside, what your role becomes. So I'm really really quite definitive about about, uh, about roles. Whereas some sides are just a little bit more laissez-faire, just first two in, uh, just do your best. So um, I would have done a lot of work over time, particularly trying to, to get some, when you're playing off nine, even off 10, to get low carry, uh, outside support early, trying to find an opposition player. In, in my world, the inside support's only got one job, get over the ball and kill contest and allow us to play quickly. Outside man, he's either trying to find the defensive player early before the ball carry goes to ground, or he's just trying to find, if he can't find a defender, he'll just find the ball carry. Yeah, yeah that's such, that's such if, interesting if work. Player yeah. the, mm-hmm. It's so that's something such, we talked, Harry, about on, if, on if Saturday night. Something yeah. we talked, Harry, about on Saturday night through the uh, through the, the Brumbies Waratahs game was that the, the Tars were just that, that half a second off in their attacking clean out. Um, and it just meant that the Brumbies, when they when they were grouped right, they 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 were able to get quick balls so often, or, or conversely, they were able to turn you know simple tackle into counter attacking opportunity, and they won turnover and they did counter from that, and so they were creating opportunities with their defence, and it was really clear to see it, particularly through the first half, and that was the difference yeah. between them. Yeah, that's such a brilliant point, uh, Brett, because I think like, you know, you watch the the quickest ruck team in the world, Ireland, and their counterpart, Leinster, it's two seconds or less, no one's making big decisions. Everyone knows exactly where they're going yeah. at exactly the same point, so they don't have to do a 0-1 A-B. Uh, and I think when you just add that one second, and then suddenly you're having to make a decision because the guy's already there. Mm. That's it. Yeah, and all it, it makes a difference. Quite safe, don't they? Island players, like two metres, two metres, they're very tight. Uh, ball carry can go inside, outside. And again, that, they'll have rolls inside, rolls outside, but they're, they're not five metres apart in that shape. They yeah. get set early. They've got good footwork. They can drop height late, which, which means that oftentimes they can get a two-on-one into the defensive team instead of a one-on-two. And even that was the point on Saturday night, yeah. is most often a single Waratah player. Now he's got two support players. But he's hitting two shoulders yeah. by himself, and then yeah. and then your support players are arriving after that. Whereas, if 20, 30, 40 times a game you can get your support player on at contact or just before contact, you get the two on one. You've got two shoulders into one defender. All of a sudden, you've got three or four meters of game line momentum, quick rock ball, and you play. And that's just the small differences. And some of that's tactical, some of that's technical. And some of that's work ethic about about what you do, but they're the small margins in in terms of creating momentum. And Ireland is superb at that, tight in their shape. They 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 drop height late, footwork inside outside. If you go inside, rolls reverse from your support players, and they can play quickly. Did you see Did you see evolutions of this, Laurie, through the through the Six Nations? Did you see differences <laughs> from any of those those six six uh, national teams from what they were showing in the World Cup? Uh, I've, look, I've, faced, I've watched a lot of Wales games <laughs> and, and, and without focusing yeah. too much on, on, on the opposition, I've, I've got to be honest. But 
I, I don't think there's there's huge difference. There's more of a difference about whether you sit over the ball or whether you deep clean and try and take uh, take two out. Mm. Again, I'd have a philosophy that if 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 you get a really good seam carry, the legs tackler takes himself out. He's going to be out of the game anyway. You've only got to find the high tackler and you're two for two, which is the, the best you can hope for uh, in in, t- in terms of clean out. If, you, if, if you've got two out of the game then, then and play quickly, then you, you've done your job. So uh, I, I think that's fairly standard amongst all teams. Maybe once you get into the A zone, you're just looking to try and deep clean create some space uh, or, or double clean from the outside to open up a, a keep going channel, those sorts of things, uh, create fine margins. But I, but I think the basic rules apply across all teams. Yeah, right. Yeah, Laurie, I know you like fun games with numbers and stats and so forth, and you've engaged in that on Twitter with me. But uh, I, I asked the Twitterverse to to pick one of these five eventualities on attack. I said, you get five steals at a lineout, you get five kicks regained, or you get five clean breaks, or you get five scrum penalties. What do you want? And I did a poll, and, and, and scrum penalties won because five scrum penalties usually translates to a lot of uh, entrances and probably a card. Yeah. And then other people really also like the five kicks regained. As a defense coach, which one do you hate the most? You know, would you hate your team to give up five steals at a lineout, five kicks uh, taken from you on the on the regain, uh, five clean breaks against you, or five scrum penalties? What what hurts you the most without any variables? Well, well can I only pick one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, no, pick, pick the two. Pick the two that you just that you want to really make sure that never happens to us. Well, I, th- I think I think scrum penalties hurt you because scrum, scrum penalties then go to uh, line. Uh, I, I, I know for years that, that we were chasing the um, we, we, we chased the triple play at the Brumbies. So a scrum penalty coming out of your twenty-two, kick it to around half. Why you maul and get a lot? You get a maul and get a, a, a penalty. Yeah, kick it five <laughs> metres out and you score like like that. That is the dream triple play. In, in rugby, and, and and we got a couple of those, which was uh, uh, we rejoiced uh, wildly when, when off a couple of triple plays. So I think I think scrum penalties hurt you. And, and if I reflect back on a little bit of Reds dominance over us a few years ago, uh, pr- pretty much on the back of Taniella uh, dominating scrum time, I, I, I felt we were the better side in, in most other aspects of the game. But when push came to shove, uh, they, he, he could he could manufacture five, six, seven scrum penalties a game. And and that was the, that was the difference. Um, I I hate line breaks against us. It was one of my big K, uh, KPIs of of trying to limit line breaks. And um, so because it, a line a line break generally is a system error, and the, and the system belongs to the defence coach. Uh, again, I've got a belief that the tackle quality belongs to the player. Tack, uh, mm. System defence system belongs to the coach. Uh, so again, system, system errors um, give me sleepless nights. So, so they'd be they'd be uh, two two things that would hurt me. Yeah. Kind of helps with the Brumbies. You have so much speed on the scramble defense now, though. It it does. Yeah. Oh, we were a poor scramble team uh, for a number of years, but 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 I, I you're, you're right now. I, I think there's a tremendous work ethic. Uh, and and goods and tremendous speed. So yeah, I mean, you look at what Tool was able to do uh, against the Reds last week, where he where he pushes high, thinks he can get an intercept, and then still able to cover Jock Campbell yeah. over fifteen yeah. meters with a five yes. head start. Like, that is Ridiculous. unbelievable defence. No, yeah. no one else is doing that. No one else is getting away with that. No one it's, else. It's, it's curious. Yeah. It's it's curious that you talk about the Brumby scramble defence, uh, Laurie, because now it has flipped to the point where. They're among the fewest tries conceded for the competition. I think they're conceding 2.6, 2.7 a game, which is there's only yep. two or three teams with better. But their first tackle miss rate is among the worst in the competition. So, yeah, and I know they're putting in new the system and all that, but that, but that, that speaks to that, doesn't it? The scramble defense is just yeah. unbelievable at the moment. It, it, it is. And it speaks it speaks to a lot of things. And it was a question I posed to, to you, Harry, was it, where Waratahs are 89%. Yep. Uh, and I think they tackled at 90% on the weekend. Hmm. And, and, and and Brumbies tackled at 76%. Something like yep. that, yeah. And, 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 and they give up four tries. And, and, and that's 
So yeah, I look at I look at that picture and and like Brumbies, I think conceded the third least tries in the competition. I think Waratahs are con- uh, a seventh on tries conceded, yet top of like of 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 tackles of of the tackle percentage. So it, it really takes your eyes to somewhere else in the game, doesn't it? And it and it and it takes me to areas like um, uh, you know, dominant neutral passive tackles, and I, I think. Yeah. The, th- the three sides with the mo- highest percentage of passive tackles in the competition mm-hmm. are Rebels, Waratahs and Force. So they're the only three sides with over 50% of their tackles are passive tackles. So that then, that talks to tries conceded. If I look yeah. at at numbers at numbers at defensive breakdowns, the, the Brumbies have got six players in the top 28 of attendance at Opposite at, at, at the tackle contest, six players. Mm, right. Whereas, whereas Waratahs have got zero. Uh, yeah. Rebels have got zero. Force have got one. Uh, Waratahs have got zero. Yeah. And 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 so what? So defense, defense. Yes, is tackling, but defense is many other things, isn't it? It's it's about is yeah. it dominant neutral passive, and they've got a lot of dominant tackles. Mm. What's your application to pressure on opposition tackle on the counter ruck or on the on the poach? Um, so there's there, there's a whole picture there that that comes together. What, what's your capacity to get in front and stay in front defensively? I, you know the, the amount of times the Brumbies were able to get into a seam on the weekend and get low between two defenders. Both defenders end up on the side of the ball carrier. They just get claimed easily can't get any pressure back at the ball because they didn't get in front. So those sorts of things, the pictures are creating. What I thought the Brumbies were really good. Guys like Charlie Cale, Tarmody Tua and a whole range of them, the, the, set, the high defender being able to footwork to stay in front of the, of the ball carrier so they could at least get a next action. It might not have been a successful next action, but at least in the position for next action, poach, boss, yeah. uh, rip a player over. Yeah. So they yeah. really... There's a there's a there's a lot of pictures. I I, I look at the, at the overarching stats, but then it leads me down some little alleyway that I'm trying to find where those points of difference are. Yeah, I think uh, you you fracture you you sow chaos in your in the your opponent's attack. You've you succeeded even if you they brushed you off on a tackle. If you're funneling everyone into the worst parts of your defense, you know where they're going to get dominated. That's a success, right? Mm-hmm. I always think about it as tennis. If you want to never have a double fault, then you'll never go for your serve. But if you yeah, yeah. if you want to have some aces and strong second serve, you're going to have more double faults. So I think on defense, you got to make a choice. Absolutely. Listen, you, you, what this tells me, Harry, is that. Sorry, Lark. You can't play the game with your foot on the brake. Well, you yeah, don't exactly. Yeah. You've, got, you, you've got to take it off and, you, and, you've, and you've got to play. And whether that's yeah. attack or defence, can't ride the clutch, can't have your foot on the brake, you've just got a free wheel. Ooh, that's a good title. That's a good one. <laughs> Abs- absolutely, absolutely right. Episode what, title just emerged. <laughs> we've just got it. We've just got it. What this tells me, Harry, is that we've got to try and get one of these logons for these for these these systems that have got all the extra stats that coaches get that we just do not see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, there is that's another there is our, your week on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, there is there is our good little break, which is which is good. Um, righto. Let's good talk. stuff, by the Let's, way. Good stuff, really good stuff. Let's talk, Laurie. Uh, it's it's fantastic to hear that you're going to team up with Joe Schmidt with the Wallabies this year. And I uh, made the point on Twitter a few uh, a few weeks ago that we're walking down the back of Canberra Stadium and there's Joe Schmidt there, and and you hadn't been announced at that point, but the way that you and Joe greeted each other, you had definitely spoken about a lot of rugby in the weeks leading up to, to that moment. So if the deal wasn't done, it wasn't far off at that point. But it's great to have you involved. It's an absolute coup to have someone like Mike Cron in, involved as well. So what sort of, without going into too much detail, I guess, and giving anything away, what sort of conversations that have you guys been having already and what have you enjoyed about it? Yeah, look, look. We, I've got to say we haven't had a lot of technical conversations at this stage. There's been a lot of conversations about about players and skill sets 
and form that players are in, uh, styles of play at, at different Australian Super Rugby teams. Um, and and I, it probably goes to, back to, I think Mike Cron might have made the point that um, uh, selection, selection is the key to, to quality coaching, isn't it? So I, I, I think I think we're trying to get a, a good handle on on the strengths and work ons uh, of of I guess all, all the players, uh, particularly. You know, there's there's a, a group of players of particular interest, so that we know their games inside out, uh, and we have uh, thoughts and plans to how we can improve. Uh, so ha- how we can improve their strengths and obviously improve yeah. areas that we think that they need to get better in. And so that's the bang for our buck at the moment. And and probably, and well, definitely down the track, then we'll, we'll concern ourselves more with with how we, we how we want to play. So, you know, to, yeah. you know defensive philosophies and, and systems and principles and, and how Joe's going to attack and those things. But at the moment, it, it's very much player focused because they're, they're the guys that are going to win you or lose your games. So we've got to have an intimate knowledge of 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 uh, each player, what yeah. their strengths are, uh, and how and how we can improve them. And then we'll go away and, and work out well how, how we're going to do that. It's it's funny. It's funny, Harry. I'll I'll hear I'll hear Laurie say something during a game about a player, and I'll think. Is that something that you just observed, or is that something that they've actually been looking at? Like, it's just, <laughs> like there's, there's almost a double meaning sometimes, and and that's I mean that's part of being a coach as well. Are there are there conversations that you're that you're having where you've where you've perhaps all realised that your approach to coaching, your approach to the game, is actually very similar? Yes, yeah, and 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 that was from our early conversations that that, that we've got. Uh, you know, when 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 Joe first uh, uh, sort of brought it up uh, some time ago, said, so, you know, there's 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 a certain way that I look at, at the game, and 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 how I would coach, and 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 mm. I mean, a, a big part of, of coming on board and and, and you know being a, a part of this exciting opportunity is is you've got to bring your coaching strengths and your philosophy. So if they because rugby can play in many different ways. Like, like I'm not, I'm not yeah. coaching the South African defence system, Harry. And, and as I said to Joe, yeah. like if you, if you, if you want narrow, narrow defence and balls out line speed, then then I'm not your man. Um, so, so we've got to be, we've got to be somewhere in the vicinity, and and we we don't want to, you know, we we want to be able to, and coaches want to be able to challenge each other in a few different things. But I, but we we certainly. Through discussion, and I've known Joe for a long time, is that there's a lot of commonality in how we see the game. And again, you know, we'll converse every week uh, about what we saw in games. And again, there's a lot of common ground about what we're seeing uh, and and what we think we need to do. So I, 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 and I, I think that'll be that that puts you on the on the on the path to becoming a good team and a good coaching team. Regardless of the system, you know, the, the, the rush umbrella or the blitz, this or the fade or the fold, uh, leadership is key in test yeah. rugby because you have so many adversities in the one match. It's so the pressure is so great. Uh, yeah. I'll go back to Chasing the Sun uh, to uh, episode three because at this, in this latest episode, uh, Rasi detects that Dwayne Vermeulen and Ibn Etzabeth are just not getting along. And it's actually harming the team. And it's at a crucial point in the World Cup. We're going to lose it, go out, or we're going to stay. And it has to do with these two guys sorting it out. Two very respected guys. But they rub each other the wrong way. They just have a friction. And he just tells them, go in that room and don't yep. come out until you're sorted. <laughs> and he sends CA in with them maybe in case they come to blows. Um, <laughs> I find that to have worked in every part of my life. Family, culture, every team I've been a part of, and I'm coaching some now. Uh, I believe in that. Do you believe in that kind of thing? Like sometimes it's not a coach. Sometimes just send the player somewhere and say, "You guys work it out. Come back and when you're when you're ready and stop this bickering." Well, that's. I think that's fantastic from Massey, isn't it? Like that's a great strategy. Uh, strategy. It's just. I mean, only they can sort it out, can't they? Only yeah. two players. So it's amazingly. It's fantastically perceptive. And 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 he's right. Like like if if guys. If, if one or two or three guys aren't getting on, it's very divisive in the team, and everybody else mm-hmm. feels it. Everybody feels it, and and so somebody's got to give and somebody's got to take, or both sides have got to give. But it's a, yeah, I guess that's 
that's why that's part of the reason why the box have won two World Cups in a row, and part of the reason what, what, where why Rassi is where he is in world rugby and the, and the level of respect that he's got. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah. yeah, that man management. I mean, the, the key there was he actually elevated the two of them. He actually told the two of them, you are my key. And yeah. in a way that yeah. forced them to make... They had to make it up, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, my, so my immediate question there, Harry, is are you the mediator in this room or are you the friction creator? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it go. Hey, one guy I would never want to wrestle is Dwayne, actually. Uh, yeah, supposedly true, he is, true. all the box say you cannot pin him. He's just a guy who will yeah. find a way. Uh, so, real. Laurie, how, how is it, has it changed over the years to talk to these young men? Obviously, coaching involves persuasion. You have to, you have to, trust, they have to trust you, that you see things, you see the numbers right, yeah. and, and you keep yeah. doing this, it's going to work. And you, you do it and it doesn't work and they still have to trust you then and say, no, keep doing it. It's gonna work next week uh yeah. is it different now with the gen z gen x millennial whatever it's called it's it's no different people are people if, if they think if they think you can value add to them that then they'll, they'll respect what you give them so yeah, yeah. And, and that that's the challenge of coaches isn't it so you know when you get to 65 and you're coaching you know Guys who are 18, 19, 20, there's, 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 a, there's a couple of generations difference there. But the thing that, that stays true, that if they think I can make them better, yeah, and if I actually can make them better, and I can yeah. demonstrate that I'm making them better, then, then they'll, they'll, they'll work for you and they'll love you, and love you for it. So yeah. uh, it, it, it's, it's the absolute bedrock of coaching, and, and it's the only way that you need to measure yourself. Am I making every player that I touch better? I, I can't necessarily control wins or losses. They'll happen. Mm. But what I, what I can see is that person getting better. What I love watching in a game of football is I see things that, that we've worked on or that we've talked about or that we've created, and I see them come to fruition in the game of rugby. Like that's enormously satisfying. Winning is, yeah. winning is wonderful. That, that's obviously the ultimate aim. But if you just judge, if that was your only measurement, then it's 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 a pretty up up and down yeah, um, yeah, yeah. roller coaster, yeah. isn't it? Uh, defense is you, you uh, as a coach, you want to be making. Yeah, defense is very habitual, isn't it? It's um, yeah. You have to, you have to learn habits because you don't have time to to think it through, um, and you and you want as many players off the floor as possible. Um, it's got to be instinctive. Yeah, what's what's your key like swing thought, or do you boil things down before games and just say think of these three things or two things, or is it more is it more of a template than that? We just we, we just have a template that we work to. Yeah, it's it's speed off the grounds, speed to set, spacing and nomination, uh, connect, connected line speed, high hustles on the inside, look after inside child from the outside. Uh, Double ups, get in front, stay in front. Uh, next action, and that's it. So that's our system. And we just, oh, that, that doesn't change. It doesn't, you, and what do you do? Just do that, yeah. boys. Do that. And and yeah. what what falls down? What, you know, people don't get set quick enough. People didn't nominate who they've got. So we had two people close together. And, and if you get if you have a system that is simple, and that and that they can practice and they can uh, adhere to in a game, then then ninety percent of your defence is covered. And then there's 10% of th things that just happen. Brilliant play by the opposition. Sure. Ball yeah. comes out, the bobble ball out the side. Then you're asking for your for your rugby talent to take over. Is that 10%? Is that 20%? I don't know. Let's say 80%. System looks after 80%. And your rugby now, so your talent, your work ethic, your ability to react looks after the other 20%. Mm. Whereas, whereas if our system only looked after fifty percent, they're in because I don't know what I'm supposed to do where. Then you're in real strife. I love the the winger that nominates. There's no one near him. He's on the short side. All the players far, far away. But he's always screaming and <laughs> putting his head up. I've Look got that me. bloke right over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I tell you what, wingers yeah. have got a massive. They've got a massive role to play, because as you say, you've got a. You might have a be defending at 15 meter short side, 20 meter short side. There might be one attacker. All of a sudden, we've got four defenders here, and but I'm under no pressure yeah. because yeah. there's only one attacker. Now I can say, oh, I could have, I could, I could smoke a cigarette and say this is too easy, <laughs> or I can actually help. 
Yeah. Like hunting players, you know, by looking what's in front, hunting players around the other side. And, and I know we did a lot of work, done a lot of work with wingers to, to say that you're never out of the game. You are never out of the yeah. game. If you feel if you feel there's no pressure on you, then somebody else is under pressure. So you've got to recognise that and help them out with your voice and your organisation, whether it's backfield, whether it's pushing around the ruck or something, so that everybody is involved all the time. If you're under no pressure, somebody else is. Recognise that and help out. Yeah. yeah. And if you're a wing, make sure you don't play in a team with white shorts because they're always, always embarrassed when you come back <laughs> into the locker room and they're so clean. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I, 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 look, I looked at James Slipper at the post-match presentation and I'm thinking to myself, Jesus, his jumper's clean. What's the <laughs> and, I, and then I thought, oh, well, it's been a rainy night. But, yeah. Uh, so maybe the blood and the sweat and a bit of the dirt got washed out with with uh, with the rain. What what you what you didn't see, Laurie, that I did see at ground level was that Slips actually went after he came off, actually went up into the change room. And he came back in a hoodie. So I'm guessing post match he went back and got the jersey. So it might have been a clean one. Ah, so no wonder it looked white. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it looked like a just. Straight out of the washing machine. Straight off. There you go. That's funny. Straight off the bench. Well, I'm just trying to just trying to work out the, the the time frames. Had you were you and Joe in Ireland at the same time, or were you at Gloucester when he first came on as Ireland coach? Uh, I was I was in my last year of Munster in 2011 oh. when Joe was in his okay. First so there year was some Leinster. overlap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and Joe was Joe was. Uh, uh, Backs or attack backs coach at Auckland at, at the Blues when I was head coach of the Brumbies. Yeah, so back in yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe yeah, 05, 05, 06. And then he went to yeah. La Rochelle. Um, and, and I was at Munster when he was at La Rochelle. And I was at Munster when he came to Leinster. I think they lost, came to Leinster, they lost their first three or four games. Uh, and, and they ended up winning. Europe that season. Um, yeah. I think they beat Northampton in the final from 20 odd points down at half time to, to, to winning that uh, the, the Heineken Cup that year. So it shows you how things can turn around. Yeah, absolutely. So you've, you, you've, I've known him a long time. A fair while. And yeah, Only for 20 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. And I was fortunate enough to spend a week at Leinster. Um, the year that, that we took a side over to the world. Sevens at Twickenham and 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 won the oh, world yeah. sevens at Twickenham with the Brumbies. I, I can't remember. The, I think it was two thousand and maybe two thousand and fourteen or something like that. Or yeah, th- yeah, something like that. Around yeah. that time, anyway. Thirteen, maybe thirteen at four, thirteen. And I spent a week uh, with with Leinster and in their meetings and training, and uh, again a really valuable experience. For me. <laughs> You're you're looking forward to it. I, I know I know I know you are, but you you're looking forward to getting back into like you're you're dictating your time now. You're controlling how much coaching you do and, and don't do, but you look forward to getting back on the tools. Oh, very very much so. Look, because it's such a, a wonderful opportunity. Uh, yeah, yeah, to, to be part of of, of the national team, um, to have a Lions series. In in just over you know twelve months time, but also you know, we're you know, we're the you know, ninth in the world at the moment. We're way better than that, and yeah. and uh, but but I, but I, you know so there's all those short term things, but just as important is to put a framework in place that that's going to yeah you know, legacy in place for the last four five ten years or something like that and you know look I honestly I watch the Brumbies play and, and, and I look at a lot of things that you know, they, they've tweaked a few things and, 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 and that but I also look at a lot of things that we've worked at over the last six years and, and yeah. I just see them pounding that out uh, every game every game and it's uh, you know we, we need to leave that legacy at the top end of, of, of you know what's the standard what's the attention to detail you come mm-hmm. in you come into the Wallabies program yeah you know, this is the expectation Back to Harry's point about leadership, all those things that 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 we need to, we need to drive a standard, we need to drive an attention to detail, we need to, to drive a, a, a qualitative approach, and then for whoever comes in next, that they're, they're taking they're taking a team that's got that that's culture is humming, their capacity yeah. to play is humming, their conditioning is humming, and 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 
rug, rugby uh, at the national level is is on a really good upward curve. Yeah, you literally take it to the next level. It's been it's been fantastic to speak to you, mate. We could keep firing questions at you for hours, I'm sure, and you'd be good enough to answer them as well. But at some point, we've got to stop, and I'm going to try and edit all this together. So <laughs> we, we we just we just thank you for giving up some some time for it. We knew it would be a great chat. Um, you've been gracious as always. Um, it's just been a great to have you back on the pod. Look, it's wonderful to yeah. chat with uh, great rugby people. So, uh, as you say, you could do it all day. I mean, I, I love I love following uh, Harry on Twitter and uh, engaging that way, and and obviously working with you every second week. So, uh, it's a, uh, rugby's a great ride for all of us, isn't it? Yeah, really cheers, is. Lord. And and uh, I will say this, Laurie. I think you know, there's never it's, it's not an overstatement to say these next few years in Wallaby Land are so crucial for rugby Absolutely. in Australia at large. And I'm really confident with the crew, with you and Joe and Mike, that they've got the beginnings of a good core. So good on you. But I mean, really, I think it's it's uh, the, the rugby's better in the world when Australia's, you know, kicking. <laughs> kicking. We're, we're, we think so. <laughs> it's not. It's just. I'm telling you. I, I hear so many people from different countries say the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's just yeah. not fun. Yeah. It's not fun to have the Wallabies floundering. Let's yeah. let's come back and smart, skillful, opportunistic, yeah. physical team. Yeah. yeah. We'll do it again. We'll do it again, Laurie. We'll try and line something up before before the international season, or well, during the international season, even better. Yeah, wow. only for winning, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is the eight nine combo rugby podcast. I'm Brett McKay. This is Harry Jones, and wow, mate, what a thrill to be talking rugby with Laurie Fisher again. I just, I honestly, I feel like, I feel like every time I'm talking about the game with him, and and I include live broadcasting with him. I'm learning something. Yeah, you know, I could talk to him all day, and I can see as a player, for whatever I've played for him, <clears throat> he'd be a great motivational guy because yeah. he's so honest. And I think coaching, in the end, I think that's why we love our coaches more than our teachers. When we think back to the old days, yeah. uh, it was the coaches were always so good if they were honest. You know, they yeah. really trying to make you better. It's 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 really like I asked him there whether they realised they were very much aligned. It was yes. Like it wasn't even. It didn't even. It didn't think about. It, didn't even pause. Where did you get out of that? I got that they were talking philosophy a lot, and they like. Yeah. They, they probably were spending all their time saying what They're type of wallaby form. game yeah. are we going to play? Yeah. Therefore, who do you like? Who do you I prefer like? Tom Wright over yeah. Jock Campbell. Yeah. 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 All of that. All of that. I'll be. I mean, I was never going to put him in a position of having to name names, but it would be fascinating to hear the names that they're throwing around. Because I, I reckon guys like, uh, like you know, we, like Holloway and Hannigan come up, but I reckon it's going to be guys like Liam Wright that feature in conversations. Uh, Could and, be, you know, the you real know, hard, think... hard working types, like you know, maybe like a Darcy Swain, maybe a yeah, um, you know, a, a, a Caden Neville. Like it's it's going to be. Old school footballers. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be fascinating. It's gonna that be could really be you know. I always think of Laurie as being it like probably believes he can coach just about anybody, and I yeah. think it would be Joe that would be uh, more picky in particular about certain yeah. weird things that he could sees, be. like that could one be. thing you do, and he goes, "Nope, sorry, cannot have you." Yeah, cannot, <laughs> cannot, cannot. It'll be fascinating. We cannot wait to see how it all plays out. And obviously, the Wallabies uh, take on Wales and Georgia in July. Um, you follow. Laurie Fisher on on Twitter at Lord Laurie fifty eight by the way, and you can hear uh, our calls of Brumby's home games on ABC Canberra, and for people interstate, you can actually pick it up via the ABC Listen app as well. So um, if you want to hear us carrying on at Brumby's games, you can do it that way. Um, it's something a little we're doing a little bit different this year is to dedicate ten minutes or so, and it might not be ten minutes this week to just go through the various competitions around. The world touching on the major talking points as we go through. It was a bit of a light weekend this weekend, wasn't it? Super rugby. Yeah, was it, was, the first. it was all about the round of 16, really. Everything yeah, it was. seemed like was. a bit of a lull. Yeah. Yeah. So, Super rugby was the first bye weekend. So, that meant that there was four lopsided scores. Um, the Blues have, the Blues have conceded 12 tries in seven games now. Like it's 1.6 a game or something like that. It's nothing. Yeah, the last two, lost the four rounds, it's been only two tries. So they're really tightening yeah, up. something like that. Something yeah. like that. Uh, the Brumbies, I think that we mentioned that try of Charlie Kales. That's a that's an early try of the year contender. And what I loved in that is the, I pointed this out on Twitter. If you look at the, the head-on replay of it, watch the work of Connell McInerney and then Hudson Crichton before it gets to Charlie Kyle, uh, before it gets to 
Corey Tool who put Charlie Kale away. Like the the work of the yeah, the, the, that the was two good. inside guys was really really good. Same question I've been asking for a few weeks: Who's the best Australian team? Who's the best New Zealand team? Currently, um, I think we're still same uh, the Hurricanes. You know, I was looking at the Hurricanes and why they're so good this year. They only have mm. one card. That that's a, actually a big deal in today's yeah. uh, competition. But yeah, you know, I think Brumbies are clearly a step above. What's interesting the numbers between them and the Reds. When you look at them, they're almost exactly the same: carries, breaks, uh, meters gained, uh, busted tackles. Uh, ex- there's only one thing that kind of separates them is in yeah. the the really important moments. The Brumbies are really calm and they seem to execute. And Noah Lolasio is playing very well. Uh, leading them around the field really well, so I think you yeah. know there's some there's some themes okay. developing yeah. about about who might be in the ten picture for the Wallabies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quick fact check there. Hurricanes have got two two cards by the way. One yellow. Oh, one is red. it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Jordy Barrett had a, had a red there. Um, the table it's and the table's funny at the moment in Super Rugby now because we're now in the first of the three bye weeks. So you're going to have it's going to be a bit lopsided and all that. But what's interesting is that. The Blues, Hurricanes, Brumbies are all on 27 points right now. And you the Chiefs on 23. The Melbourne Rebels are the second placed Australian team on 19 points, which is interesting. So, yeah, interesting. Uh, we'll be back in later in the week to discuss round eight of Super Rugby Pacific on Games of the Week. So make sure you're subscribed and you don't miss that when it does come out. Um, a Champions Cup round of 16, as you say, it was all about Europe uh, round, rounds of 16. This weekend, um, Harlequins edged Glasgow with a 75-minute try. The Bulls thumped Leon in Pretoria. Uh, the Stormers went down in Cape Town to La Rochelle with that missed money Libok conversion the 80th minute. Uh, Exeter were too good for Bath. Ditto Bordeaux for Saracens and Leinster for Leicester. Northampton kept Munster scoreless after halftime to win 24-14. And Toulouse thumped. Racing 92, who may or may not have put all their eggs in the top 14 basket, I think, just the way they're We picked a good game the of the week there. The, the Harlequins-Glasgow was – I watched the whole thing. It was absolutely brilliant match. Yeah, just no. Highly recommend Some that. good stuff. So uh, top uh, – the so quarterfinals next weekend, Bordeaux will host Harlequins. <laughs> Leinster will host La Rochelle. Northampton will host – The rematch. Bordeaux. They're all the Saturday games. Uh, finishes with Toulouse and Exeter uh, on the Sunday. Um, we'll touch on Challenge Cup in games of the week as well, potentially. Might be a token mention. Uh, obviously, the URC, the Premiership, top 14 are all on hold uh, in this European stage. In the League One in Japan, uh, Kabelko, Kobe Steelers have dropped out of the top four after their 36 27 loss to. Tokyo Suntory Sun Goliath, which then in turn allows Yokohama Cannon Eagles to jump above them on the standings. They beat uh, the Rico Black Rams uh, in there. So, uh, so uh, yeah, Cannon Eagles. So I think they've won it's at least three straight, I reckon, and I might have even be selling them short there to, to jump into the top four. Uh, Major League Rugby, mate, uh, 79th minute penalty goal to former Waratah Mac, Mac Mason. Delivered Seattle a 34-32 win over your Dallas Jackals, I'm sorry to say. Uh, the, RF... It's beginning to be a trend of yes. final two-minute penalties going over. Yes, yes. But the ball remains strong. Um, RFC yeah, and, Los Angeles, uh, number 10, Daniel Hollingshead, missed the 72, 72nd-minute conversion that might have delivered the new team's second win. Uh, they had to settle for a 22-all draw. With uh, with Old Glory DC as well, and as I say, um, don't miss our our end of week show games of the week, where we go through the weekend's games in comps all around the world. We pull out the best games, the ones that we think you should watch. So it's just another reason for you to like, follow, subscribe, and make sure you catch every episode of the Eight Nine Combo as soon as it drops. Insert ad here. Some news of the week, mate, to wrap things up. Um, as we've discussed with Laurie Fisher, Mike Cron will join Joe Schmidt and the Wallabies coaching team as an assistant coach. Chris Thompson um, has been named as a team manager as well. He's currently with uh, with the Brumbies and finishes up down there in a couple of weeks' time. I saw him on Saturday night. Both of them, though, worked with Schmidt and Peter Horn in the World Rugby HTP team. So it feels like the... The World Rugby HT, HP band is just coming back together. Uh, <laughs> and and interesting, they're, they're not going to have as many uh, coaching staff on, no. on board. This, I like no. this. I like this. I like no, the mentality. They're only, yeah. only going to have, you know, they're only going to have five or six or seven. They're not going to have 15. 
uh, was, was the case last year. Sam Whitelock uh, will retire from professional rugby at season's end, just as we thought he might be coming back to New Zealand to answer the SOS of the coach. No, he is pulling the pin completely. It is hard to think of a better tight forward over a long yeah. haul. And like um, the record, 153 just... tests, 125 test wins. Two Rugby World Cups, 11 Tri-Nations and, and Rugby Championships, 14 Bledders Lows, 180 games for the Crusaders, seven Super Rugby titles. They were consecutive, by the way. Uh, yeah, just... You knew how to uh, win, uh, yeah. Oh, habitual, absolute habitual winner. No question about that. James Slipper, um, friend of the pod, played his 178th Super Rugby game to go past Stephen Moore as the most capped Australian player. And I got to... Talked to him on field post match, and I just said, "Hey, feeling, mate." And then I actually said to him, "We've had a few of these milestone conversations, and every time I say to you, how you feel?'" And he said, "And I say, your answer is always just older." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's he's, he's, he's so <laughs> understated. He actually came oh, on Stan yeah. Sport, and they and they he were did. pitching to him, and there was a try scored. It was actually quite nice, and his reaction was so underwhelming. <laughs> Yeah, I did see that. I did Johnny see Maloney that. was like, uh, hey, uh, I'm not sure you're, you're trying to get the job. Yeah, you've got some work to do in your commentary, mate, certainly. No, no. But we, look, look, he's got he's got a couple of years in him, so I've got no question he'll get he'll go he'll play two hundred plus games. There's no no doubt in my mind about that. Stephen Kitchoff is heading back to the Stormers after one mm. year in Belfast with Ulster, mate. That sort of happened all very quickly, didn't it? There was suddenly the, suddenly there was talk about trying to plum. There, there was a lot of chatter about that. His wife never went never went to Belfast either. Yeah. So it was always kind of this, is this going to work out? It was a really a horrible year for Ulster, even though they actually yeah. won in the challenge thing. But Lots of stuff off field. Underperforming, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly right. Curtly Beale has joined, or will join the Western Force this week as injury covered for their fullback, Harry Potter. I wondered if he might get a chance this year. And as injury cover, I, I wasn't quite expecting it to happen this soon, I must admit. And Michael Hooper's Sivens, it's S-V-N-S, Sivens debut for Australia in Hong Kong ended with a fourth place finish. They Australia went down to Ireland in the third, fourth playoff um, there. And for the, so for the second time in as many years, New Zealand took the double at the Hong Kong Sevens with both the women's and men's teams winning their respective cup finals. On Sunday, uh, the women beat the US of A 36-7. Uh, the men's team beat... France, uh, 10 7. So, uh, Hong Kong Sevens done the, the last Hong Kong Sevens in the old stadium. They moved to a new one next year. So, it's a bit of an end of an era. Yeah, I don't talk that much about Sevens. They had DJ Dewis playing too. Haskell was the, the actual DJ. <laughs> I saw like, that. You have, a, uh, you, have a, you have a real unhealthy dislike of Sevens, right? I don't like anyway, that guy. That's yeah. another day, another game, another talk for another day. But that is us done for episode nine of the eight nine combo, mate. Thanks to all of you out there in rugby rugby pod world who have found us. If you're new to our work, then welcome. If you know us from the last few years, then thank you so much for following us. And speaking of following, we are on the socials everywhere at eight nine combo, Twitter, Insta. TikTok, YouTube, where you can find video versions of the podcast every week, um, and TikTok, where you keep promising me you are putting stuff up. <laughs> I'm going to get there soon. Not to put too fine a point on it. So give us a like, a follow, subscribe, uh, interact with the pod directly, but also rate and share. We love hearing from you. Uh, and ratings, reviews, um, we're 50-plus five-star reviews across Spotify and Apple as well. So uh, we love to, to, to see it all coming in. It all, it all means a lot. Harry and I are in our usual places on the socials, at Harry Baldy Jones and at BMC Sport. And while you'll find Harry's written musings on the Raw a couple of times a month, you'll now find my Australian columns weekly over on Rugby Pass. So uh, check those out if you can. And do, again, please do like, follow, subscribe on your pod platform of choice and YouTube. And make sure that you get a new, every new episode as soon as it drops. And keep an ear out for our promos currently running on Amazon Music. Amazon. Uh, this, Amazon. This is the 8-9 combo, the short side set piece combination you didn't realise you needed coming from the podcast Double Act you already had. I'm choking. I'm Brett McKay. <laughs> <laughs> He's Harry Jones. <laughs> we'll be back in your ears later in the week with Games of the Week. Come choke with us. <laughs> what was that, man? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, God. We did it. <laughs> <laughs>